Building on our last few videos related to the syndesmosis and the Weber classification, today we will be talking about the Loggy-Hansen classification. This classification for ankle fractures characterizes fracture patterns based on the foot position and direction of force at the time of injury. There are four categories. These are the supination adduction, supination external rotation, pronation external rotation, and pronation abduction. Now here are the four types and their associated fractures or ligamentous injuries. You can pause the video to read each. However, I will go over some helpful associations for each. Starting with the supination adduction injury mechanism, these can involve injury to the distal fibula. And as you might recall from the last video, this was the Weber A pattern. Thus, you can have a quick association between the Weber A fractures and the supination adduction injury mechanism. Next is the supination external rotation category. This can include a lateral short oblique fracture of the fibula, which one can associate with the Weber B fracture pattern, and this is specifically with an anterior inferior to posterior superior fracture line. Thus again, another quick association between the Weber B and supination external rotation injury. Next is the pronation external rotation mechanism, which can include a lateral short oblique or a spiral fracture of the fibula, specifically an anterior superior to posterior inferior fracture line above the level of the joint. Hence, this final category can be associated with the Weber C as well. Finally, for the last category, the pronation abduction category, this can include a transverse comminuted fracture of the fibula above the level of the syndesmosis. And again, this would match up with the Weber C fracture pattern. Being able to quickly associate the more straightforward Weber classification with the more detailed Loggy Hansen classification is going to help on rotations. Also make note of the direction of the fracture lines for the different injury mechanisms as well, as this is something that is commonly asked to medical students and can be a great way for you to stand out as it shows you've gone the extra mile in understanding the differences in force directions with the different injury mechanisms.